So like I mentioned earlier, uh, with some of the maintenance uh, that I'm doing and uh, getting it ready for the DOT inspection and just getting it ready for, uh, for the rigors of RV transport, uh, the truck does need rear shocks. Uh, when I was doing my kind of overall look at it, climbing underneath and looking for anything that was uh, questionable or was kind of worn out, uh, the shock, I found that the shock absorbers in the back were pretty, pretty whacked out. Um, you can look at the shock and when you see a lot of buildup on the, the shock body here, what's happening is the oil's leaking from the top here and shock absorbers are full of uh, a special oil. And when it all leaks out, then the shock doesn't work uh, properly. Uh, you can see it built up on here and then the dust and dirt and road grime will collect on it. And it'll start getting bigger. Some of this dirt got knocked off with the power washer when I was running the power washer under there. But this shock was really covered and I knew that one, one of them was, uh, was out of whack. So it was time to get a new shock. Um, replacing shocks is pretty straightforward on most vehicles and it can be pretty easy. Sometimes you run into some problems like I did on this shock. Uh, it's usually one bolt at the top and one bolt at the bottom and you pull it out and you put a new one in. Uh, they're pretty simple to do. This one, it ended up, um, there's a bolt that goes through here and there's a steel sleeve in there. And oftentimes the bolt seizes to the steel sleeve and then there's nothing that you can do. You can't get the stupid thing out of there. Uh, you can spray it with PB blaster or some kind of penetrating oil and try, but usually it gets stuck in there and then you have to spread the ears get a cutoff wheel in there or a Sawzall and cut the bolt out and then get the shock out and then replace it with a new bolt and then you're all set to go. Um, this one I did, the three of them came out or three of the bolts came out with no problem. One of them didn't, so I had to cut it off and I'm replacing the bolt on that. It's not a huge deal. I've had to do it a thousand times. Um, but uh, when you're dealing with shocks, the shocks are kind of the lifeblood of the suspension. It they kind of dictate what kind of ride you're going to get, um, how stiff the suspension can be at times, or how soft it can be. And, and shock absorbers are designed for different applications. Uh, in this application, I'm going to be hauling a whole lot of heavy campers, so I wanted a uh, more heavy-duty shock for the rear uh, to control the rebound. Shock absorbers don't change how high a vehicle sits. A lot of people think... When a truck's sagging in the back, or a, any a car, vehicle, anything, is sagging, it needs shocks, that's not the case. That is not true. If it's sagging in the back, it means your springs are wore out. You can take the shocks out and lay them on the floor, and the truck will not move from where it was sitting. It won't, it won't drop down. You put new shocks in, it won't make your rear end any higher. Shock absorbers don't carry weight. They control rebound or bounce of your vehicle. When you hit a bump, the, the suspension comes up, and then the shock absorber allows that suspension to come down slowly. It controls the bounciness of your vehicle. So in my case, I wanted a little heavier duty shock to uh, help with the rebound of the campers. So I decided to go with the Monroe Gas Magnums. Uh, let me open this up for you, show you something. Now, when you get a new shock absorber, uh, they're usually gas charged, and I'm not going to get into how shocks really work in the gas charging and stuff, but the way it's gas charged, um, it, it keeps the oil in there from turning into a foam. So there's a little piston that holds it down, uh, holds the oil down in there so it doesn't shake around and turn into foam. So they're, they're packaged like this with the little strap on it. Sometimes it'll be a metal strap. A lot of times it'll be this plastic strap here. And you cut that and the shock will automatically extend itself to its full length. Now that's not carrying any weight because I can compress this shock after it expands pretty easily. So it's not really carrying any weight. It might carry, you know, a couple of pounds or, or whatever, but it's not going to lift your vehicle up when this thing expands. But all you do is you cut the little strap and then the shock will eventually get longer and it comes out really slow. Now I can put it on the floor and I can compress it back up and then it's compressed again 
and it'll come back out. See, I did that pretty easy. It doesn't carry any weight and it's not gonna make your uh, vehicle any taller or, um, or carry any weight. Now with the gas magnum, what you'll notice is the main body, this part here, is larger than the ones that are coming out. Now, what that does is it allows the shock to have more oil in it and larger pistons and working mechanisms in there to, uh, to control rebound better. The more oil you have inside of a shock, the cooler it will run. Shocks get really hot when they're working. If you, um, if you grab a hold of a shock absorber on like a Jeep after it's been off-roading a lot and it's moving back and forth a lot, you'll burn your hand. It, uh, they get really, really hot in operation. The more oil you have in there, the cooler they'll run and the less shock fade you'll get. It's just like brake fade, you can get shock fade. They get too hot and then they don't work as well because the oil gets all super thin and it and doesn't work as well. Uh, with this gas magnum, it's a larger body, larger uh, volume of oil, better cooling, and larger pistons in there to control rebound a little bit better. Now this is gonna make the back of the truck a little stiffer, feel stiffer when you're driving down the road, but it will control the rebound better when I'm loaded with camper. Uh, typically, I like to go with uh, um, with something like a gas magnum in, in the rear and then a gas matic in the front. Uh, that has some different valving in it that will change depending on uh, your your conditions and the road conditions, how fast you're hitting bumps and things like that. Has an automatic valve in it that will change from a stiffer shock to a softer shock while you're driving. So it's a, it's a little bit better, but it's a thinner body. It's a little bit different kind of setup. Um, and I, I don't run those typically on the, on the back. But the shock is something that you don't want, really want to skimp on. And they're not terribly expensive. You can get, uh, I think these, uh, um, these gas magnums were, I want to say they were 40 or $45 a piece, something like that. Uh, I picked them up on, uh, I think I got this one from Rock Auto or something. Uh, you can get them anywhere. You can get them on Amazon or eBay or you can get them from a local parts store or whatever you want. I'll put a link down in the description uh, to these. Um, and uh, if you want to pick these up for your particular vehicle, you can. They are vehicle specific. You don't just order shocks. You got to get the right length and uh, the right mounting. Some of them have a bar pin that goes through here. So it's two bolts that hold it together. Uh, so they mount a little bit different on different vehicles. But uh, this is the one that I'm going with in the rear of the, the truck. Uh, probably the next maintenance cycle, I'll replace the fronts. Um, they're not really... They're starting to seep. They're getting a little bit damp at the top, but they're not really leaking down the body yet, but uh, they're probably gonna be uh, needing to be replaced sometime soon. Uh, but like I said, there's different applications uh, or different shocks for different applications. The shocks that I, I run in my lifted off-road Jeep are completely different than these, this style. I run a Bilstein uh, shock in my Jeep it's designed for off-road. It's also designed for a lifted vehicle because so they're longer and they have more travel. Um, they have about, oh, about 20 inches of travel, meaning from top open to compressed. I've got about 20 inches of travel in the Jeep shocks as opposed to these that don't have quite that much uh, travel. These ones only have about, about a foot of travel or something like that. So I'm gonna be putting these in. Uh, I'm not really gonna show you the video of putting these in because two bolts and, uh, and that's not what this, this video is all about. I'm just showing you what kind of maintenance items and things that you're gonna to have to deal with when you're getting ready to go out on the road.